Hey guys, this is Holistic Health Harry, and today um, I'm joined just after April Fools by um, Georgios, and some of you may remember him from a three-part series I done with him last year. I post on YouTube, which was amazing. Um, so thanks, Georgios, for joining us. I know me and you are connected. We've met, and we have um, I say different masteries, but we connect well together. And yeah, I just wanted to have you back on because I keep seeing your posts on um, narcissism. I know you're going very deep with it. And just wanted to update people on any new insights or solidification of your theories on this, these personality disorders, and also um, how do we deal with them. So to start off, what is narcissism? What, what are these things? That's a very good question to start it off. We've had a while since our last interview. And we talked about it back then. That's when I just started really studying all of this. Because of my experiences that I had an experience with a narcissist. I was with for 17 months. And uh, I identified that I've always been attracting these people. Because I was compatible with them. I gave them something they were looking for. So now I have some more insights. Because I've dealt with him much more since then. How do you deal with him? Well, if you're online on Facebook, of course, you're going to find these kinds of people. You know, they're very active in social media and they want to make new connections. Narcissists are always looking for supply. So they will look for people who have resources, talents, who can give them a little piece of their cake, right? So if you're doing very well with your business, if you have good content, they will come to you. They will like you. And they will get, they will tell you usually, let's collaborate. I can give you my skills. I have this. And you will give them yours. And how do you find out that it's a narcissist? When they tell you that they're going to do something, they're going to give you something, but they never really follow up. They expect you to do all the collaboration for them. Like you're the one who has to do everything. And of course, um, how do you identify these people? And what do you do once you have identified them? What then? Are you just going to block them? Because there's lots of these people. Or is there a way to harmoniously live with them? <laughs> yeah. So... What is your experience of that? Have you had any narcissists come to you doing anything like this? Do you know what, Georgius? I, I was going to say to you, it's um, like, so my understanding of it, and I, I haven't really gone as deep with the topic as you, but I'm a human. I've interacted with people in real life, online, of course, but even in real life. And I feel that it's true what people say, a lot of people, that everyone has narcissistic traits to some degree. Now, the problem is when it gets, to me, unhealthy, and that's the problem, because when it gets to unhealthy levels of what I call ego, which I understand we need here, but when we have unhealthy levels of ego, the personality disorder of narcissism, and what I see in it is um, selfishness, extreme selfishness, and to the point where they don't mind, it would seem causing harm to others um, to get, like you said, that supply of energy. And often to get that off you, they have to do some negative things in this world. And... That's why I, I guess I'd call, because like we said, I think everyone is, I have these traits in me, but when it becomes a bit unhealthy and you can't build a relationship with that person, yeah, I have had, I've seen them online. I've seen obviously your ex and um, and other people that, you know, that are definitely um, dangerous. I'd say dangerous. This is why we're making this topic. Yeah, they are on the lookout. And... They are always very charming, very nice. They praise you a lot. They idealize you. Because the narcissist... We have to differentiate between people who are narcissistic and just actual narcissists. So a narcissist actually, like full-fledged with a disorder, this kind of person will always idealize you to be perfect. He needs you to be perfect. And he needs to be perfect for you. And to do that is to expect you to be perfect. So how does that happen? Okay, if you are perfect, that means you always agree. We are always aligned. We are always wanting the same thing. And you always give me what I want when I want it. There's no like 
later. Like there's no on your terms, it's on our terms. Everything is aligned completely. And the narcissist tries to convince you that he is perfect too, that he will give you the same. And that's why um, sometimes you get stuck with these kinds of people because they are giving you something. You feel the pressure is on you, but at least they're giving me. So why should I leave? Hmm. It's hard to leave, especially after you have attached to these kinds of people. You have already built a relationship with them. Maybe you've been with that person for months, years sometimes before you find out that, oh, he really needs me to be perfect. Can't accept anything less. So he needs me to always be like a mirror almost. It's like they need people to be part of a hive mind mm -hmm. where everybody is part of the collective consciousness and you are doing everything together. And if you're not, if you try to have your own ideas, your own opinions, your own feelings, your own thoughts, you're going to get thrown out of a cult. Mm -hmm. So they assign feelings onto you. Like the narcissist may say, oh, I know that you feel this. And then you say, but I'm not actually feeling this. I'm not even thinking about this. Why are you offended? I don't think this. But the narcissist is convinced that he knows what you think better than you do. Hmm. That's what you usually see. And um, of course, how do you deal with it? You have to agree with him hmm. without agreeing with him because you don't want to agree with him. Of course, if you are not agreeing with what they say, the only way to get rid of them, to let them to back off, is to either make the appearance that you agree or to block them. These are the only two options. So the best test, the fastest test to find out, is it a narcissist? Just disagree with them. See what happens. Keep disagreeing. And if they, if they try to argue for an hour, two hours, three hours, if they can't just leave you alone, yeah, then you are most likely dealing with Is that because you're, you're saying all this because with your ex, you don't have to talk about this, you don't want let me know. Um, But yeah, is that because you, I know that I, I'm with you because I met him too and I saw some crazy stuff and I didn't spend 24 seven like you did around him that I'll never forget. But is that because that's what he did with you? He just, um, that's my first question. The second question, I guess, is how comes they project? Are they projecting onto you perfection? Why do they want you to be perfect and agree? They with believe everyone? that perfection is the norm, that that's the only way to have any kind of relationship. Right. They actually believe that the only way to have a relationship is to have complete harmony in all aspects. There can be no conflict. To have a disagreement is to have a conflict, even on the most minuscule level. Because their ego is always threatened because they believe, oh, if you don't agree, that means I'm inferior. You see something I do not see. Okay. So I must convince you that yeah. I am right because I don't want to be inferior to you. The, the reason they, they feel like this is because they were not ever allowed hmm. to be a separate entity to their mother or their father. They were an extension of them. And they remained that way. They never separated. So they need you to be an extension too. And they can only look at you as an extension. And if you're not, then of course you must be an enemy. There can be no other explanation for why we would have a different opinion. Wow. And maybe with, crazy. Um, maybe with um, uh, um, an ego that's just out of control and trauma causes this in all of us, an out of control ego. And I feel like it's our job to Get a little bit normal, normalize it. I feel like maybe full on narcissists like you've experienced and I've seen, um, they're sort of in denial about um, there's a serious, obvious lack of self-awareness that stops the ego from being reduced and being humble. Basically, I'm talking about humility and humbleness in order to truly grow. So there's like a delusional perhaps in their brain, a delusional ego, a grandiose, a grandiosity. Um you know, where they think they're this and that and there's something special, which if they do but think this would make sense with what you said, that they disagree with you. Because, of course, in their minds, whatever comes out of their mouth is actual God and truth. There is no middle ground. There is only their words. 
and your agreement with them feeds that ego even more, which is the only way that they think they can survive because to disagree with them is to threaten that ego, I guess, it's to threaten their existence here in their heads. They have an idea that everybody needs to be the same. Because why wouldn't they be? Why would people be different? Why would have people why would we want to have any conflict between people? Let's just all be on the same page. So they use logic to explain themselves to the, the delusion. The delusion is if you disagree, then you must be wrong because you must have come to your own conclusion. Your own conclusion means it's based on your thoughts, your feelings, you. The narcissist has no you. So when the narcissist says, I have an opinion, it's not his opinion. He says, this is the opinion, the opinion. There's no, oh, my opinion. No, no, the opinion. Because the narcissist believes that to have a true self, to be an individual, is a disease. Really? It's a mental illness in the narcissist's eyes huh. to have any kind of individuality. Huh. Yeah, because the narcissist was taught that to be separate from mother, I will die if I'm separate. It's wrong. Oh, it's wrong. Because the, the mother told the, the child over and over again, if you disagree with me, I'm gone. I hate you. If if you if you complain, if you want to do something that I don't want, I will abandon you every single time. Every mm. time. So in the narcissist, it's a subconscious belief that of course, then it means I must be an extension of you, you must be an extension of me, then we are safe, then we are good. Wow. And if I go outside of that, if I try to be here, me, I'm dead. It's the end for me. It's wrong. Right. It's yeah. quite mentally ill, yeah, but it is very severe. It's a very extreme traumatic condition. Yeah, what you're explaining, um, I'm having to think it through in my head. I've heard you say it before. So part of the reason to interview is to reprocess that. So a lot of it then would be obviously not even technically the fault of the person that is what we call the full-on narcissist. We're talking about parents a lot of the time or people they're surrounded by um, that create these issues in them. Like you got, from what you're saying, you got to comply or die. And even if complying with what your parents say doesn't make any sense, but it keeps you alive, then you'll learn to comply with the stupid things going on. And you just learn. And, and in some ways you get stuck. Like, because I actually don't know your opinion on this, Georgios, but I've never seen, and I don't know if they're it. I don't know everyone. I've not been around the world, obviously, but, I don't know people that have been cured from this, dude. I don't know people that have actually come out of it that are full on. When they get to a certain point, it's like they're gone. Yeah. They can't seem to, it's like you said, comply even if it's irrational. That is their way of relating. Compliance is like a religion. Compliance is the highest good. It's for the good of humanity. It's for your own good to agree with me and me to agree with you, whatever. But of course, in this religion, in this cult, how do you get out of it? The only way to get out of it is to change your belief because it is based on the belief that if I have my own opinions, if I commit to myself, my own feelings, how I look at something, if I develop my own viewpoint, then I am a fraud, an imposter. The narcissist believes to have an opinion is to create an illusion. That's why the narcissist believes that everybody else's opinion is wrong. Because everybody else's opinion is an illusion. Because if I make an opinion, it must be an illusion too. So of course he applies his own rules, his own rules to everybody else. It's really coming from within. The narcissist also objectifies himself. The narcissist says, 
this is not an individual. This is an extension. It's a part of a world. It's like a divine part of God, an extension of God. So everybody's an extension of God. And if everybody forms an opinion, they are separating from God. So they are committing sacrilege. They are heretics for being individuals. Are you speaking here on the, the partner that you had? Or are you speaking on every single narcissist? Because Every narcissist single narcissist operates this way. Yes, really? all of them. Wow. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. So that's why it is a narcissist. That's how you can determine. Yeah. The narcissist will tell you if you if you go deep with a narcissist. Yeah. If you ask him questions, what do you believe is a relationship about? What do friends need to do to cooperate harmoniously? And then you can ask them, what if your friend has a different opinion? What do you think about that? And they will tell you what their beliefs are. They will tell you just how insane they are. They will tell you the truth. Because the narcissist is not really in the game of lying to you. It's in the game of I have a delusional sense of a world, an infantile view of a world. Infantile means there's no separation. Everybody is the same. Mm. If they're not the same, then they are sick. And I must save them from their differentness. That is really their belief. Mm. They really believe that. So they're not, it's not really just about themselves. We always think, oh, the narcissist is doing all of this because they are thinking just about their ego to boost themselves. Mm. It's a religion. Right. They actually believe that it's for your own interest, for your own good to join them. Yeah. They really, they really so in a way, they're doing it from a heart space. I mean, it's wrong, but they are doing they it. They think it's correct. It's, it's the right thing to do in their eyes, yes. Yeah, I'm, and also I'm saying they think it's an, a nice thing to do. I mean, there's psychopaths that do evil things that are obvious, and then a narcissist is doing something they think is correct and nice, but it's not, Right. I think that's a problem for a lot of people. They cannot reconcile. How could somebody be so convinced that they're not doing anything wrong when everybody knows, of course, it is wrong? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. And I actually wanted to say in this one, with your ex, I noticed one interesting thing. I don't know if this is with all the narcissists. I told you this a few times. I just never forget that that the thing that jarred me the most and the most obvious thing that stuck out was the creepy smile. And I've not seen that in i mean only in full-on psychopaths sometimes not in i've never seen it in another human and it was just weird and it was like at the end of a conversation so yeah it was just an insincere creepy like i got you i fooled you that's what it felt like i don't know when, when Anything, did this happen like when uh, did you see the smoke? after I, I was talking to him like after he'd finished I think after he finished his sentence, or I finished talking, or, or a bit of both, but the end, um, obviously after conversation ends with a person, you've just had a finished sentence, you're still looking at each other, and then this smile of complete insincerity, and I wouldn't say dark, i just say unsocially calibrated, because I've never seen another human, it tells you, it's just, for me, it was the biggest red flag, and anyone that I, I can't explain it to be honest. It feel I feel like he was I was being fooled or conned. Um, that's what he was trying to say, I think, to me. It is it is weird. I've seen this quite a lot of times. I can remember seeing the smirk. It's like I got what I want. Isn't that great? <laughs> Aren't you happy with me? Aren't you happy with me that um I took everything I wanted from you? I uh, yeah. You got nothing, but I'm happy. So, aren't you happy with me? Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, I got you. Um, aren't you happy with me? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like just... a child. It's like an infant. Yeah. The ma the, the the child. Look at it like in the playground in the sandbox. I take your toy away. Yeah. Now I have it. Don't you see? Yeah. It's my toy now. <laughs> yeah it's like that isn't it correct yeah it's like um yeah you're right there's a childish element and under a lack of understanding of how humans socialize and how we bond together 
So mm. that resonates with what you're saying. Like, because it's just not normal to smile insincerely. I mean, mm -hmm. after a conversation, go, well, I don't know, I can't even do it. It's creepy almost. Creepy no, is what I describe I it as. Yeah. It's like the person is not aware that you have your own feelings. You don't really exist to them. You're just someone to play with. You don't, you're not an entity. You're nobody. Nothing. Is that what they feel you're, when they do it then? Sort of. Yeah, but it's how they feel. They feel that um, the world belongs to them. Hmm. Yeah. It's how an infant feels. We we don't know that because we can't remember feeling that way ever. Hmm. So how can we go into the narcissist's mind? We have never experienced the narcissist's mind. Uh, we have, maybe, but we can't remember. Nobody has memory of how we felt as an infant. And, oh, you know, I mean, I cannot remember. Most yeah. people I know don't. Hmm. So that's why people get confused. Hmm. I mean, they try to think of a narcissist. Oh, they must be like me. They look like me. They talk like me. They seem to behave like me, more or less. Hmm. So I guess they are like me. And of course, that's a logical fallacy. Yeah. Just because it looks like you doesn't doesn't mean anything. Yes. Doesn't mean anything. And beyond that, I feel that they I don't know if you agree with this, but but I know that um, your ex and a few other people, the what they're very good at connecting with you or making you feel like special. I'd say love bombing even and being very smart with analysis. And then that gets you on side, you see, that reels you in into friendship or relationships. So they'll be like, you'll be like, wow, this person's amazing. I feel amazing because they they say so many smart things um and i is it because they're trying to they they have a deep understanding of you or they've learned how to manipulate to get what they want out of you later down the line so they come across perfect at the beginning they, they look at you as a maternal figure they look at you as, as, a, as a child look at looks as a mother when they see that um you have traits that they like they they only see what they like they need to idealize you because a child only looks at the mother as ideal. It never gets to the stage of, oh, I guess mother is not perfect. Because once the child gets to that stage, mm -hmm. then the child creates its own opinion, its own feelings of a mother, its own individuality. But uh, in the narcissist's mind, I need you to be perfect, and if you are perfect, then I am perfect. Mm. Only if you are perfect, and, and I interact with you, because I must... All the people I interact with, they are perfect. It sounds weird, like, why... The wow. narcissist is not even aware of this. No. It's automatic. Yeah. It's like, like when, I look, when I talk to you, I think we are equals, because that's what humans are supposed to be. But I know that you're not perfect. Like you got negative traits, you got positive traits. But I don't think about that. I don't need to think about that. It's just automatic. I know that this is how we relate. Yeah. And the narcissist doesn't think anything either. He sees you and he, and he feels, oh, perfect. Perfect. Always perfect. But, of course, if you disagree... Then the devaluation sets in. Yeah. And the reason the devaluation sets in is because the narcissist needs to get rid of you. Because he's threatened. It's like, oh, it's not perfect. So if he's not perfect, maybe I'm not perfect either. He has to consider the fact that he's not perfect if you are not. Hmm. Because, of course, I mean, can't be completely delusional. On some level, he has to think about that. And that's why he needs to get rid of you quickly. And then he needs to forget about you. And then he goes to the next target and does it all over again. Yeah. It's a denial. denial. It's like, yeah, I need to stay in the perfect world because this is what's supposed to be. Yeah. Because, um, Georgios, ultimately, I think we talked about this before, what's gone on in the full-on narcissist life has been... We, we all like have crazy stuff that goes on with all of us. We all have incredibly sad and Pat makes us warriors. But I mean, in the, what happened with them, the world was so unsafe. 
that now they've created a delusional reality of everyone, I guess, from what you're saying in their world is like, um, to, to exaggerate it, it's like a bunny rabbit, like in their world, oh, there's bunny rabbits here. I'm going to interact with this yeah. bunny rabbit that's perfect and this bunny rabbit. And that's because the world at the beginning was so hard for them. They couldn't accept the reality of what was going through them and the suffering maybe that they created a false delusional reality. To be honest, um, Georgios, I would like to go inside their head and live a day in the life of a full-on narcissist. That would be quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very... I don't think it would be that fun. Yeah. <laughs> because it must be very terrifying. Right. Because if everybody has to be a bunny rabbit, because reality challenges the narcissist all the time. Reality says, oh, this year is not a bunny rabbit. And then the narcissist is like, oh, no, not a bunny rabbit. Fuck. <laughs> like, you know, the narcissist panics. Yeah, the narcissist yeah. gets dysregulated immediately, goes into a panic. Mm. And how mm. does he protect himself from the panic? Mm. He goes into a rage, gets angry. Why? The only way to deal with all this fear, the threat that the reality is challenging you, that it's not perfect, because if it's not perfect, then it's it's not safe. Why it's would they not run away then? Isn't that another option? Or do they never why would they not run away? A lot of narcissists actually they do, they become as they say schizoid. Mm -hmm. So they cut themselves off, they become like hermits, they make they become celibate, mm -hmm. they they justify I'm doing this for purity. Because I am the next stage of human evolution and other people are just contaminating me and I must get rid of them. They're all after me, like paranoid delusions and stuff like that. Like, oh, they they want to hurt me. Hmm. So I better cut myself off, yes. But of course, when um, the problem is the narcissist feels is still an infant, is not equipped to survive on its own. Hmm. It needs other people to tell me who am I, what am I supposed to do, give me a life. Hmm. So he finds somebody else again to give him a life, to give him the answer to who he is. Who am I? Because I don't know. I'm. He has no access to who he is. There's no framework. So he has no access to who he, who you are. He can only look at you from a delusional lens. He mm. can never see you as a person. So you feel invisible around the narcissist. That's wow. another thing. Yeah. If you feel invisible around someone, if they can't recognize what your feelings are, if they mistake you, like if they say, oh, why do you hate me? And you have zero hatred inside of you. That's also a red flag. That's crazy, yeah. Uh, um, what is the solution then? I mean, these people exist. I don't know how many people you think around the world are on, on this full scale. I mean, yeah. we know people, but how prevalent is it? And what's the solution that people can do to deal with them? What's 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 your guidance? Or do you think that maybe we should just la allow them in our lives? Because I'm sure you'd agree they come into our lives sometimes to help us, um, to give us, to spread knowledge of what they do. They do help us. Because they give us a mirror. They help us to see where, how to exploit us, our naivety, our empathy, our openness. They exploit uh, our ability to put ourselves into another person's shoes the way they do. Because the way they do it, they don't see you. They project all the time. And actually everybody on some level projects. And that is what they can teach us about. Because um, if I have no access to the narcissist's mind, if I have no idea, how much am I projecting onto this person? Because like if I'm talking to you, I have no idea if you are like me. No idea how reasonable you are, how empathic you are, how you feel. No access to any of that. But I have to project a certain mm, logical framework of how I think you may be looking at all of this. Hmm. So I can have some kind of trust. 
because I need to trust you. If I'm interacting with you on some level, I need to trust that you're not just going to cut me off in the middle of a conversation. You're just gone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I need some trust. So yeah. this basic trust, the narcissist doesn't have that. So he artificially creates it all the time for projections. The projections is the only trust he got. Oh, you must be like that. You are not, but you must be. Hmm. So where do we do that? Yeah. Like sometimes, like for empathic people, right? You see a narcissist and you think, oh, it's so cute it's just a helpless baby they're so powerless they have suffered so much yeah. i can totally understand their suffering yeah. but can you no do you really know their suffering like what do you know they told you something and then you are projecting to fill the gap. i can't understand their suffering because as much as i've suffered personally i didn't go down the realm of delusion i'm trying really hard to be as authentic as possible mm -hmm. and i know there's levels to it but I think me and you and a load of people watching this do see reality somewhat correctly because the only reason I say that is because that's the only way to truly grow here. It's the only way to grow. So they don't. So something must, something just got, yeah, I don't know. They're in a different line, different timeline. I don't know, dude, like different timeline. That's an excellent point that you just, you know what you just said? You said to be authentic, to be honest, to not project all the time is the only way the narcissist believes to project is the only way to lie to himself is the only way Why? Wow. to convince himself that what he sees what mm -hmm. he feels is always correct no matter what you are saying he believes that is the only way wow. so he's the complete opposite of that what you just said but like i said only way that's a very important point everybody actually has that everybody has this is the only way for me to function right now this is the only way how i look at the world right now to explain what the fuck to do like right now for me example um i believe that right now the only way is to try to do my best to deal with the information that comes to me and uh, to never take things for granted. To never trust the first instinct. Oh, he looked at me badly. So he must not like me. Yeah. I can never commit to that. So it's like, I must be open to to be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's mad. Um, would you like to do some more? Um, I yeah. can ask you more questions on it. Okay, let me start a new Zoom because I'm still going to cut out. All right. Okay, then do part two. Okay. Yeah. All right.